Hey there YouTube, Alex here, AK95, bringing you guys a deck profile of Girgias. Some of my friends wanted to see, uh, or viewers wanted to see, uh, a Girgia variant uh, for the new format. Uh, or by new format, I just mean after uh, Girgia Gear and Girgia Gear essentially got hit to one. Uh, I think this deck's still pretty viable. Uh, we saw in Ohio, a lot of people ended up either just cutting the Girgia Gears and MK2s completely. Some people are still running them. I tried it with... Um, this version, however, does not run Gear 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 or MK2. I tried running, like, one MK2. I tried running two. Um, it just, like, essentially now the goal of the deck is trying to plus off as many free floaters and one-for-ones as possible. Um, and just trying to control the game more so than anything else. It's not as, uh, it's not as just spammy as it was before. MK2 allowed you to spam a lot. Same with Gear Gear Gear. And, uh, Gear 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 being cut to one, um, really hurt because you're almost forced to cut it. And essentially now, um, you have less access to Girgia armor or Gigant, which means you only have six armors, that being your three armors and your three arsenals. So you're almost forced to run upstarts, and you're, 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 you're obviously running upstarts and everything, but you're almost forced to kind of just play into the, like, like, play the whole game, essentially trying to get into armor if you don't have it. If you don't have armor by, like, turn one or two, you're going to be really far behind, um... So that's what I essentially built this deck around. The goal is like if you're if you don't have armor arsenal, um, to where you don't just like auto lose. Which um, you guys will see what I run. There's a lot of one ofs in here, um, but nonetheless, I'm gonna hop right into the deck profile. We obviously run the three armors. We run the obvious three arsenals. This is like the same shit right here from like last format. Still run the three uh, accelerators. Uh, we just run Gary Giano. The only reason we run him is because of arsenal. Um, and the fact that you need a level 3 for, for Gigant when he dies as a floater. Um, and Gugiano was the best option because you can still do the whole Arsenal, turn 1, tribute itself. Uh, get Gugiano, tribute itself to get back Arsenal. Especially on an Accelerator from your hand. And since it's a 2 card combo, um, which, which basically makes your Gear Gigant, um, an even better floater. Because you're going to be searching a card off of this, which is you're pretty much going to be adding back Accelerator or Arsenal. Typically you'll add back, uh, Accelerator. And then you'll be able to bring back your Giano if he dies. So uh, that, that play is still really huge. And, and you definitely need the uh, Gear Giano for that. Um, and, and just overall, Gear Giano is probably the best Gear Giano of, of all of them. Um, I opted to run two of the hands. I really traditionally didn't like the hands, especially last time. I know a lot of people ran them. Um, uh, I, I, I see people right now trying trap tricks and stuff and all these different variants. Uh, I kind of tried to stray away from that. I definitely tried it, but I felt the hands were a little bit better. Um, obviously the hands are really nutty and r they break up a ton of plays, but the idea for me behind the hands, especially right now, uh, the way this deck is built with no MK2s and obviously no gear, 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 um, you don't really have too many, uh, sack cards or top deck outs to a lot of plays. So like, you can't just like rip into a gear, 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 like randomly mid game and then just be so far ahead of your opponent or make a huge comeback play the following turn with like an Exiton or Gigant plays. Like you can't really do that. MK2, you can't really just go into like... Um, you know, rank three, and then just like break up their board, and then like whether it be like like Alucard or Soul Silver or whatever, and then go gear your gear, or just trying to do like multiple accelerators. You can't really make those huge pushes. So the idea behind the hands was to break up their boards when you don't have um, arsenal or armor going like going going to town basically, um, and that that's the goal behind them. Uh, next card is just one card card D. I ran two initially, but card card D was just it was the thirty sixth card in this deck. Where, essentially, it's it's really good both going first and second. It doesn't really matter. Um, I've been playing a lot of water lately, and it kind of varies from deck to deck. Like obviously, decks like Artifacts want to go first, and that minus one doesn't really hurt because they'll have cards like Mermelio to even out advantage. Um, with this deck, however, um, I know you want to go first and like set up your armor and arsenal, but I'm almost still tempted to go second all the time with this deck. Like going second is just huge, and like it's not a combo deck. So it doesn't really matter, but if you are playing against a combo deck, like suppose you don't know what you're playing against, uh, you can get outpaced really, really easily. So I'd rather have them one less card, and our, this allows you just to basically even out at those situations. Um, I really like this, and you can search uh, card card because it's machine too, obviously. So uh, card card is really, really cool. I, I like it as a one off. I never, I never really want to draw more than one. Um, for the spells, I run three obvious upstarts, uh, double soul charge. Uh, Book of Moon, uh, Mind Control, and Dark Hole. I know some people cut these, um, or at least move them to the side deck with this deck. Um, mostly because of decks like Sylvans and like LS and whatnot. But like, particularly like decks that are like that outpace you, particularly like Sylvans, because they don't really care about back rows. 
Um, that's already an inherently bad matchup. These cards are great against pretty much anything that isn't those decks, um, particularly like Sylvans, um, which Dark Hole isn't even that bad against, to be honest. Um, and I guess Mind Control could bait out like Felgram, but like I don't want to sacrifice or I don't want to take out cards that are only detrimental in like one, maybe two tops matchups. Um, where they're good against every in the situation where they're they'd be good against every other matchup as like power cards, and I don't want to do that, so I opted to run these. You obviously like side these out occasionally, like mind control. I'd be siding out against like Sylvans, for instance, but I'm not gonna not run it just because of one deck um, when it's good against a plethora of other decks. So um, they're still power cards and they're still absolutely must in this deck, in my opinion. And um, the reason Dark Hole and Mind Control were really big last round, obviously, was because of Mirror Match. But even now, without it, they're still really, they're really proactive. Um, you can take Hands, Marmelios, um, you can take Pikes, you can take Lindy's, although Lindy doesn't really matter because you, you don't really have any rank 3s anymore. Um, and Dark Holes is obvious, like, it clears boards, like, it, it's really important. Uh, for the traps, uh, I run three Fiendish Chains, pretty obvious. I run two Break Thieves, this might seem a little excessive. Um, however, against Artifacts, you really want this, against Water, you really want this. Um, even against Sylvans, you really want this. Like, it's it's good all across the board. And like, if I draw like like one of each, um, I'm pretty I'm sitting pretty good. Especially if I draw like one of each and like an arsenal or an armor or even a hand, um, you're sitting pretty because it's it's gonna take a lot for your opponent to start breaking up your board. Um, so yeah, uh, I just run 2D prisons uh, just because of hands and just like other slow decks. Uh, you side these out a lot against fast decks, but they're they're all right. Uh, two wire taps, that's all you really need. I never really wish I had a third, especially if the, your opponent makes you go first or you decide to go or you're going first. Um, you never really want to open up double wire tap like you did before. Um, there's not as many wire tap wars back and forth. This is really only just for those like like those power traps that you want to just slow down and or just stop in general. So double wire tap's fine. You never really need more than two. Uh, for the one of traps, you run Soul Morning, Trenchal, Bottomless, and Compulse. These are all like one of staples in this deck. Uh, Compulse is just mech, but you do have to run it. I really don't like I, Compulsory is one of my all time favorite cards. It's just like right now, this format, I haven't really been liking it. Uh, but you do need to run it, especially those situations where they're like gonna kill your armor arsenal and you need to bounce those back so you could like reset for next turn. Um, for the other one ofs, we run just one Blackhorn. I was running two, I was siding one at one point. I think right now I'm siding one. I was also running Trap Trick, Trap Hole Nightmare. But like the theory behind this is Mirror Match isn't as prevalent. Um, artifacts, like, they'll exceed occasionally, but, like, a lot of the time, if they're, like, doing their Dianea play, they'll, for some reason, they always end up popping this, and if they're not popping this, they're probably just gonna be pushing through stuff anyway. Hands break up this card. Um, it's, it, this card's alright against Sylvans if you have it, but it sucks against established boards. Um, it's not as prominent as it was last format, at least in my opinion. There's just not as many, like, critical XYZ plays, um, that you want to shut down. Like, then, you, like, last format, you really want to stop Gear Gaggins from hitting board. You really want to just stop anything that just put, puts a huge immediate threat on board with this. And besides Exiton, which you have outs for, being Fiendish, being Breakthroughs, being Warning, being, you know, a bunch of other cards. Um, it, it's just not as powerful, at least in my opinion. So I only opted to run one. Uh, if you run the Traptrix engine, I guess you could throw in a Traptrix Chapel Nightmare. That definitely would be one card I would consider uh, adding in here. I run one Call the Haunted. It was great uh, with the Trap Tricks lineup when I was running it. Just the one Marmelio, one to two Marmelios, because you could just do like end phase Call the Haunted on it, pop their back row, and then like you could do other plays, exceed with it, you could go like Arsenal, exceed with it, or you could even just go end phase, bring back armor, and then like reset next turn and you just go off. Um, it's almost like a mini gear, gear gear if you do it on armor. So it's definitely not bad. It's better with the Trap Tricks engine, but it's definitely not bad without it. Um, I really like Call the Haunted. It's, it's a versatile card. I like cards that, uh, that are that are not linear. I like cards that you could you could play in different scenarios that are live pretty much all the time. Um, so yeah, that's why I run Call the Haunted. I run one Needle Ceiling. Uh, breaks up boards. I like it as a one of. It's it, people still play into it all the time, and even if they don't know you run it game one, it it becomes even better game two and three. Um, until they see you play this card, um, it, it's it's a surprise factor. And once they see it, they like a good player is always going to be wanting to play around it. So Needle Ceiling's huge. And the last card I borrowed from my uh, from my profile from uh, from Nationals from the uh, from the North American World Championship qualifier was ma one Macro Cosmos. This card was absolutely huge for me then. I don't really like main decking Dave Fisher because like if I'm running D Fisher main decked, number one I'm forced to play it uh, like right on the spot, and number like and I don't really like I can't do anything if I'm bluffing it. 
Whereas like, or, or I want to hold it until I, like it's the correct time to play because you don't want to just mindlessly play it all the time. Um, the thing with Macrocosmos, I like it because it's, I feel like it's more versatile at being a trap because you can play it during your opponent's turn when they don't expect it. Um, and setting it isn't that bad because there's like a lot of plays that I've done, uh, particularly with Torrential and with Needle Sealing. Uh, where or even dark hole where like I'll play one of them and then I'll chain macrocosmos and then all st all their stuff will get banished and you can't really do that with the de uh, defissure because like they probably won't be playing into that stuff or they'll it'll probably force them to change their play it won't necessarily make them overextend um, I mean you're obviously side decking like soul drain and defissure but I definitely would be maining macro before those cards I absolutely love macrocosmos as far as uh, what it does and it's an obvious floodgate like it just shuts like if you can resolve this against water or uh or sylvans it's pretty much a huge blowout a lot of the time if they can't get it off board and then it's also great against artifacts a lot of the time too because their stuff like unless they have ignition or space this card is just sitting on board and their hands aren't doing anything um their trap tricks aren't doing shit because they suck against you um and their artifacts are just not doing anything. So this card can be a huge blow against every single deck. And it can hurt you, but not really. Like, you're not really running MK2, so you're not as graveyard dependent. And Guy Gant, you only run one Gurgiano, which... Like, you're not... You're, you're gonna... You're, you'd have to be playing, like, incorrectly for this card to really hurt you a ton. Um, it does hurt your hands occasionally, but they'll have to get rid of this, and then your hands can become live. Or they'll have to deal with your hands, and then you could use this. Like, there's just so many different plays. Like, I don't know. I love Macrocosmos. It's a 40-card deck. Um... Obviously, or 37 with the upstarts, but I guess I still like calling it 40. Um, for the XYZ deck or extra deck, uh, we run three Gigants, though pretty obvious. We run a fourth Gigant and Emerald. Um, I might cut him, but like I, I usually just use him to put back hands a lot of the time. I don't really, and accelerators. I don't really, because like he was much bigger when I ran the one Giga Gear and two MK2s or even three MK2s at one point. Um, he's not as big right now, but he's definitely a card I feel like is still a necessity. Uh, one Dweller. Uh, one Dweller, uh, one Diamond Dyer, one Ragna Zero, or Ragna Null, Ragna Ghoul, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, uh, I think he's not as prominent, there's just been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of Medulces, at least in my area. Um, so I've opted to run him. I might cut him, I'm not entirely sure for what yet, but he, he's alright. It might be Heartland Drake, or it might be him, I'm not too sure. I just wanted to keep the extra deck as diverse as possible. Uh, one Carnagorgan, he's a must. Uh, Cowboy, I'm sad, I... Don't have an ultimate yet, but who cares? Uh, Cowboy just ending late game stuff. You have the room for him. You don't really, you don't run any run any rank threes anymore. So you have room. Uh, you have essentially three extra deck spots, which I added in the Cowboy, the Ragna Zero, and I believe the Maestro, which is the next card. Uh, I like Maestro. Some people are running Utopia over this. Uh, Utopia is just like stopping hands and like late game stuff. But I like Maestro because he's a little bit more proactive. You use a lot more during your turn. Flip their stuff face down, baiting stuff out, and he has huge defense. So I mean. Not a lot of cards can deal with this. Artifacts really struggle to deal with this card. Because, um, like I said, he's 23 defense. They can't crash hands into it. Moral Tag, it can just save itself. It doesn't really matter if it targets or not. And uh, it can flip their stuff face down. So I think I think my strike's really, really important right now. Uh, one Black Ship of Corn, one Rhapsody. I'm Berserkin. Everybody asked me why it, why I said I'm Berserkin. It's, this this one's foreign. It's, uh, rap, it's Numer 80 Rhapsody. I'm Berserkin. So it's not in Berserkin, it's I'm Berserkin. Every time you play this card, you gotta go, you're Berserkin. Um, this card's hilarious. You absolutely need this. Uh, one Silent Honor, one uh, Eul Storm Exiton Knight, and one Giant Hand. I know a lot of you don't have uh, access to it. If you don't have it, I guess you can play Utopia or uh, something else. Uh, I just have access to it, so I mean, why would I not run it in this deck? It's definitely really solid when you do play it. Um, but that's the extra deck. It's 15 cards, obviously. I'm not going to be showing a side deck. The side deck, I can just tell you guys right now, um, it, it just varies from area to area. If you're trying to make it generic as possible, I mean, you're obviously going to be running fl standard floodgates. You're going to be running deep fissure. You're going to be running uh, soul drains. You're going to be running uh, probably, you probably be running your rivals. You're, you're obviously side decking MSTs. Um, I have a couple different, uh, you know, side decks that you could definitely add in. But there's there's stuff like I, I was running banishers. Um, definitely the one cycle reader for light sworn. Uh, you could run light imprisonings, you could run rivalries. Uh, I side one to two emptiness because I wasn't maining. I was actually maining an emptiness, which the cards that I would consider in the main deck right now really, really heavily as my 41 and 40 second card uh, would definitely be a vanity's emptiness and a forbidden lance. I think those two cards are really, really huge, especially as one ofs. Um, I really like one ofs in this deck. Like, I obviously just love them. Um, but I don't want to cut up sides for them because with, with this being a turn two to turn four deck, meaning. 
it, even if you have the cards that you want, that being your uh, your arsenal and your armors, the problem is that it still takes an extra turn for these resolves. So even if you're going first, let's say you go first and you draw like a perfect opening with like arsenal or armor. It takes a turn for them to resolve potentially successfully, assuming they resolve successfully. That's a turn to like set set the armor or whatever, and then flip it next turn, risking that it'll that it might that it might not resolve. But if it, let's say it resolves, that's your turn, your opponent's turn, and then your turn. That's turn three, and then you're ideally going to be trying to make a play that turn. If they hinder it somehow, you have to wait another turn to make another big play. And if you're going second, that's already turn zero one or uh, one two. Then their turn is three. Then turn four is your turn. So it's always, you're always, almost like always on a clock with uh, Gyrgios, which is the one big issue with it, which is why you're absolutely forced to run upstarts. And I run the card card D essentially as like another upstart um, when you're when you're trying to get out of early game. Like this deck struggles to get out of early game, but once it gets going, um, it really does get going. So that is the deck. Let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, you guys can definitely try it out. I think it's something still viable. I definitely... I definitely don't like it against fast-paced decks, but like, Light Sworn and, um, Sylvan just outpace this deck like no other, so you're really forced to rely on those Floodgates, and almost always going first against certain decks like those, especially, like I said, like, Sylvan's, I never, like, believe it or not, like, Sylvan's is one of those really, uh, big issues for this deck, where it's like, you want to go first, uh, like, you don't want to let them go first on the chance that they draw fire, Lone Fire Charge, but they have one less card to draw into it, unless they have Charity Upstarts. Um, which they almost always have like some combination of those, um, but there that's one less chance of them drawing into it. And then the second thing is if you go for if you go choose to go first against those decks and you don't have like macro or just like a play to stop any one of their like big push plays, um, like macro warning, um, fiendish, and maybe like breakthrough or something like that, and maybe like getting your armor set up or arsenal. Um, if you don't have those. Um, going, them going second gives them another card, and that's even bigger, because they can, they can draw, like, it's a combo deck, so they want to see more cards, as many cards as possible, um, and they don't really care too much about your back rows, so if you don't have, like, an immediate answer to their stuff, they're probably just gonna blow you up, so, it definitely varies, when you're side decking, you almost want to go first against those decks all the time, because you need to draw your floodgates, um, so there's a lot of contradictions, but, uh, nonetheless, that is the deck. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Do you guys think Gear Gears are still viable? Do you guys think uh, they're still a playable uh, deck as far as uh, the competitive scene? I mean, Hat is still everywhere. Artifacts are still everywhere. So, or variations of them are, you know, still running rampant. So, I mean, I don't think Gear Gears will fall off the map immediately. Especially until, like, they'll get Augur eventually. I don't know when we're supposed to be getting it. I don't know if it's going to be the promo or whatever. Or if it's going to be a next set. But... Uh, I know it's not in dual slides, but when they get Augur, I think they'll they'll still see some play. Gear, 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 gear armor and Augur is still it's still real. Like there's so many plays that Augur offers. So that is a deck. Let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, be sure to comment, rate, subscribe, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Um, drop a comment down below what you guys think and what video you guys would like to see me make next. Check out my Facebook, Twitter, uh, Facebook fan page, Instagram, uh, Skype, Dueling Network, all that stuff down below in the description of this video uh, to get a hold of me. And uh, yeah. Peace, guys, and check out my other videos if you guys already haven't. Later.